the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. St. Bonaventure, Bishop, Confessor, and Doctor of the Church, our saint for today, 14 July. Uh, he was a very important figure in medieval uh, philosophy, uh, theology, um, and also uh, uh, for, especially for the Order of the Franciscans, of which he was a member and superior general for a number of years. St. Bonaventure was born in the year 1221 in Italy, and this is about 40 years before, or 40 years after, uh, the birth of St. Francis of Assisi himself. While still a very young child, St. Bonaventure uh, was sick to the point of death, but was saved by the prayers of St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, St. Francis uh, was um, holding him in his arms and exclaimed that uh, the child's life, uh, would, there would be good things to come. And so saying, he said, Bonaventura, which is uh, good things to come in uh, Latin. And so it became uh, his nickname, Bonaventure. Uh, he was actually named Giovanni, but this nickname stuck. Uh, so St. Francis, uh, he, the boy was healed um, uh, at, at that point, and St. Francis would die uh, only a very few years later. Uh, but uh, St. Bonaventure, or at that time still young Giovanni, uh, was very, uh, we could say, affected by this. He grew up knowing that his life had been saved by the founder of the Franciscan order. And so when the time came, uh, when young Giovanni was uh, a young man of 20, 22 years old, uh, he joined the Franciscans and, of course, took the name Bonaventure. Uh, so that was his, um, uh, you know, certainly uh, his way of respecting the virtue of piety, thanking those who are above us who have done great things for us. So he entered the Franciscans in the year 1243 at the age of 22, and he studied in Paris under the best philosophers and theologians of the time, uh, which were considerable. You know, people have this idea of the Middle Ages as being a place of darkness and superstition and uh, ignorance, uh, very, very far from the truth. In fact, what gave modern academia its, its um, or rather the roots of modern, modern academia is the Middle Ages, the universities of Paris, uh, of, of Rome, uh, of all these places, and, and this is where learning and education really took its root. And the average person had the opportunity for many, many centuries of free public education simply by going to the monasteries uh, where the monks, the nuns, would teach them for free. Uh, people don't realize that, but that is certainly the, the case. So St. Bonaventure is uh, studying in Paris uh, under, under the best philosophers and theologians, and he earned his doctorate after a few years later, and he did this in the company of a fellow student by the name of St. Thomas Aquinas. Now, they both would have studied uh, what is, or they both did study, uh, what is known as the Book of Sentences uh, by a man, Peter Lombard. This was written a few hundred years previous, and it was a compendium of the most important questions and answers about theology, and was also marked by its careful treatment of objections. You know, people talk about biases and prejudices these days, and everybody has them. And I mean, it's, it's, they're not always bad. A bias, a prejudice is simply before you think about something, you form an opinion. Uh, everybody does that. You, you have to do that going through life. Uh, the question is, do we do that about matters that deserve careful attention and thought? And if we do, are we aware of it? And in the Middle Ages, that was very much the case. And in fact, in order to study, really to understand a question better, they would seek out the best objections to it. Because when you study an objection, you, you understand uh, what, what it is the subject is being objected to. You have a better understanding of it. And so they were very careful to seek out the best arguments against the existence of God, the best arguments against philosophy and theology, so that they could understand God and theology itself that much better. Uh, take that modern academia, uh, especially with the modern, what is it, uh, the, the cancel movement, where they seek to silence any opposition whatsoever. This is the death of education. It's a death of knowledge. It's, it's the death of anything resembling uh, education. Uh, that's an attempt in this country to undo uh, really the academic institutions that have their roots all the way back here, especially in the high Middle Ages, the 1200s, St. Bonaventure, St. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, uh, you know, we, we enjoy in our modern era um, the fruits of, of 800 years of mankind's best efforts and best minds uh, um, augmented by virtue, uh, virtuous individuals, um, and, and we're just watching it crumble around us. Uh, but before, before I get off on, on too much of a tangent, um, 
So Bonaventure, Thomas Aquinas are studying uh, this book of sentences and very logical, very methodical, uh, very precise. And in fact, St. Bonaventure uh, understood that if God uh, would, uh, created the world and everything in it, which he did, then God created the mind, God created logic, God created learning, God created science. And so if you understand more about God, you understand more about everything God created. You, if you are a good theologian, you are a better scientist. You're a better musician. You're, you're better at whatever else it is because God created all these things. And that's why he would say, a quote of his, if you know everything but Christ, you know nothing. If you know nothing but Christ, you know everything. And this indeed is the virtue of wisdom, which orders all things according to their final end, which is union with God in heaven. Uh, so St. Bonaventure uh, lectured and taught at Paris for a number of years after receiving his doctorate, uh, contemporaneously for some time with St. Thomas Aquinas. Um, and he's known as the seraphic doctor. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas is known as the angelic doctor, uh, both for the, the, the purity of their teaching, uh, the sublimity of, of their intellects, uh, their arguments, uh, just absolutely fantastic, absolutely superb. If we had to, um, or rather recognizing uh, the strengths of each one, Thomas Aquinas was uh, very strong in terms of Arist the Aristotelian method, uh, more on the philosophy side. Uh, absolutely brilliant theologian by far, but uh, understood Aristotle very well. Uh, St. Bonaventure, on the other hand, uh, or rather um, in line with that, we could say um, supporting that, understood St. Augustine very well was more on the Platonic side of things, uh, more in the, the, uh, the realm of, um, well, the forms of the, the theoretical and so on. Uh, so these two philosophers uh, supported and complemented each other extremely well in the advancement of theology, which indeed from that point forward uh, enjoyed uh, an advancement it hadn't seen in, in hundreds of years. In fact, uh, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas was, was his um, commentaries on the sentences of Peter Lombard were so good uh, his Summa Theologica replaced the sentences as being the uh, summation of all uh, um, uh, of theology in the church. And that has not been equaled since. That is still the uh, benchmark for theology is, is Thomas Aquinas. Now, the Franciscans might disagree because uh, Aquinas was a Dominican, uh, but that's a different, a different matter. And it was, so it would be good to note, too, that, that uh, Bonaventure, again, he was a Franciscan. He was studying. He was teaching. Aquinas was a Dominican. Uh, both of which orders had been recently founded. At this point, it's only 30 years after, um, uh, some 30 years after the death of, of uh, St. Francis of Assisi and his establishment of that order. Uh, so St. Bonaventure, uh, unfortunately for him, was an excellent leader and diplomat, and so he was elected superior general of the Franciscan order. Uh, certainly he was happy teaching, he was good at it, he was an excellent professor or um, excellent theologian, uh, but his, his skills were needed in leadership as well. And uh, it was he who was responsible for taking that young Franciscan order and making it the most prominent order in the church for the next 300 years, uh, along with the Dominicans as well. Uh, so definitely the, the uh, grace of God was upon him uh, to build up the order that God wanted, the Franciscans. Uh, eventually, uh, bon Bonaventure's diplomatic efforts um, uh, enabled him to, uh, he had, resulted in the election of uh, Pope Gregory X. His election to the papacy was instrumental through Bonaventure. And as you could say either a reward or a revenge, he named Bonaventure a cardinal. And so Bonaventure was um, uh, present at the Second Council of Lyon in 1274 at the insistence of Pope Gregory X. And while there, Bonaventure, uh, he led to um, a wonderful reconciliation with the Greek churches. Uh, however, sadly, Bonaventure died uh, while at that council, and in fact, there is speculation that he may have been poisoned. Uh, he was declared a saint about 100 years later in 1482 and recognized as a doctor of the church about 100 years after that. Uh, so this, that is the, the legacy of St. Bonaventure, uh, advancing the science of theology, uh, a superior general of the Franciscans, leading it to a 300 years of prominence in the church and beyond, and uh, a very, uh, very pious, very holy uh, individual who understood that everything came from God. And, and this, this was be his skill. That, that is why he was skilled, we could say, at these other things. It is always sanctity, which is going to benefit any field or profession or endeavor that an individual undertakes, especially academia.
you know, there was this, this idea some, some time ago, even in Catholic colleges, that um, colleges should be free to uh, investigate uh, the truth or free to investigate studies, rather, uh, even if it was contrary to church teaching. Uh, this is manifestly false and evil because if something is contrary to church teaching, it is contrary to the truth, and individuals are you're not going to advance um, uh, knowledge or science or academia by studying something false as if it were true. Uh, you have to know that it's false and study it from the standpoint of how to expose the falsehoods, how to understand more fully the truth. But if you disagree with truth, with settled, established truth, you'll, you'll never get anywhere. Uh, and this is always how the Catholic Church has operated, in that sanctity, especially humility, incline ones to inclines one to love the truth and if you love the truth you're willing to set aside your prejudices your previously conceived notions because if you begin to suspect something is true you follow it uh, you want to know what is true and because you have the sure guidelines of the teachings of the church of holy scripture uh, from god who is truth itself uh, that that's where the uh, you have the safest path towards uh, advancing in knowledge and in wisdom and so this is always what the church has done. The, the Catholic Church, the Catholic principles have always resulted in better study, more advancement in every science. And this is why uh, the, the, the Catholic Church is the foundation of the modern world in which we live. Modern astronomy, modern geology, modern scientific method, music, architecture, banking, uh, 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 finance, uh, everything. It all was built in the Middle Ages by the, these monks, these nuns, the Catholic Church, that is the culture out of which it all came. Uh, so if we see now crumbling around us uh, academia, so-called, uh, which has rejected God, rejected the truth, and they are turning themselves wholeheartedly towards fables, and we see where that is leading. Close-minded, unable even to tolerate, unable even to listen to a contrary opinion, much less a reasoned argument, but you wouldn't know uh, from a hole in the ground. Uh, the people masquerading as as academics or professors these days in colleges, and they're nothing but uh, um, uh, political activists, uh, one step away from barbarism, and we're really seeing that in our in our country today, in the world, in fact. Uh, but with uh, uh, intercession of Saint Bonaventure and 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 the other saints in heaven through our prayers, we can return to sanity. Uh, we can return to uh, some sense of normalcy, and hopefully sanctity. That is what we are all called to be. In that, in that, by um, our, our prayers, by our endeavors to know the truth, uh, we will all be advancing the reign of Christ in the world, and that is what brings uh, peace and knowledge and wisdom uh, through the intercession of Saint Bonaventure. Uh, let us pray very much for that these days. God bless you all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost.